I mean, if I go back far, I think at a young age, I made the switch from reading fantasy novels to reading old sci-fi. And I think it was very formative to hear about things that were quite close to reality, like having immediate access to information or being able to communicate with anyone around the world, things that were like very much everyday life at that stage, alongside things that seemed very abstract or very impossible, machines that could think or massive, uh, what's the word? Massive simulations of complex systems being run on, on supercomputers and things like that. And that's kind of what got me in the headspace of thinking more about technology. And then like a lot of prospective young coders, I started with HTML because I was a bit creatively minded as well. And I thought that would be a good place to start. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. I liked the design element of it, but also, yeah, the kind of combination of creativity with also the critical thinking of it. And then at school, I did some courses on Python. I did some courses on Java as well. And I had one particularly good computer science teacher who convinced me to go to university for it. And then, yeah, I did, I had some uh, professional experience as a software developer. I did a lot of uh, data analytics and data science projects at university. That was what my master's was centered on. And then having graduated, I was sort of looking for how that built into a career. Uh, and I saw two paths in front of me and one was this path of data science and one was a path of data engineering. And you know, it so happened that uh, I became a data engineer. Yeah. So I work as a data engineer, as we said, for a team that is an interdisciplinary digitalization team which means we create these digital solutions for industries or for sectors or for use cases, which traditionally might have been lacking this element of digitalization. And what the role of data engineer means is that we create the systems and maintain the systems that process and that store data. Um, in an everyday day in the work, I guess that means we are working very closely with the data scientists and we're trying to make the job of the data scientists and the job of the uh, field experts, the technical experts, easier. They know their data best. They know exactly what the data should look like and how the data should be. But the reality is that when you measure data, it doesn't always look like that. So a lot of our work is simplifying the repetitive processes that have to happen in data processing. We create these pipelines that are able to transform data into formats that are more easily workable. And uh, yeah, that means there's a focus on uh, data quality, there's a focus on scalability, there's a focus on efficiency, and there's a focus on in keeping the customer involved, keeping the person who is ultimately using this data involved because they're the ones who need to be able to use the data, right? Uh, things I enjoy about it, I think it's, as I said, with programming, it's a great combination of this challenge and creativity. Um, ultimately, you're working with a variety of different use cases, a variety of different industries. Me personally, a lot of what I've been doing is in the, the area of power systems uh, and industrial automation, which means that you learn a lot from field experts that maybe you wouldn't necessarily learn. Um, and it's also very challenging and uh, involves a lot of putting your own experience and your own opinions into designing schemas or thinking about uh, whether you're going to load data all at once or whether you're going to stream it, or if you're not going to stream it, then how often are you going to load it in? There's elements of the process that you have a lot of control over, but ultimately there are sort of the good ways to do things. And you also learn a lot about when these good ways apply from your customers, from the people you're working with. For sure. I think that the first thing to keep in mind is to have a goal, um, especially if you don't necessarily have a background in programming and you're also getting started with programming. Ultimately, the thing that most motivates people is being able to link it to something that already interests them. Some people are really good at looking at YouTube videos and reading articles, and there's so much of that on the internet and you can learn so much for free. But even people who are really good at that eventually reach a point where they need to put that in practice and they need to have a project that they're working on that they want to work on. Uh, and I think the best thing you can do if you're starting off is thinking about a field that interests you, any field really, and then thinking about how 
you can work with data from that field and do something that interests you in that field. For me, it was uh, when I first started with HTML, it was that I was trying to make like a, a Valentine's website for my crush at the time. So I had a very strong motivation, uh, which meant that when I was learning, I wasn't just learning, I had to know it, I was learning with an objective. And I think that having an objective centrally is super important. And I think the rest will sort of follow. You'll very quickly through projects realize the scope of what you need to understand and what you don't need to understand. Um, and that being said, I think there is a point that you reach as a programmer where you're able to do a lot, but maybe you're limited by how well you can do it. I kind of think of it as the, the nested for loop stage of being a programmer where you're not doing things uh, in a way that is scalable and necessarily efficient, which is kind of the magical thing of programming is that you're taking these very uh, efficient small operations and stacking them together into something that can do a lot. Um, and maybe it's at that stage that you should consider trying to either do some online courses or if you can to try to get um, formation within the company that you're at or to find a company that will train you for these sorts of things. Because I think learning a little bit about data quality, learning a little bit about coding best practices really takes you to sort of the next level as a programmer. And these things are also very applicable in the field of data science and very applicable in the field of data engineering.